We just finished up National Women's Health Week, and today's case study, I'm gonna focus in on a problem that I see a lot of time in women. We've got a 42-year-old woman who comes to me with years of back pain. Her pain is in her lower back, sometimes radiates to her groin, and it's excruciating. She has trouble doing things such as unilateral weight bearing, and what I mean by that is it hurts more when she goes up and down the stairs, she gets in and out of a car, even walking on uneven surfaces like taking walks on the beach. She's gone years with this pain and she's had MRIs and x-rays and all of those were reportedly normal. Because all of her workup and all of her imaging over the years were normal, she thought she might be going crazy. And in fact, she was embarrassed to go to doctors because she was worried they were just gonna tell her everything was normal again. So when I examine her, I always ask my patients, where is your pain? So she would easily take her finger and point to her pain being right here. So what's the diagnosis? Is this patient crazy or does she have a real problem? And if she does have a real problem, what is the solution? How do we make the diagnosis? What treatment do we offer her? And is there any surgery that might help her? If you think you know the answer, drop a comment below, and I'm gonna give you a full commentary video tomorrow explaining this most commonly misdiagnosed cause of lower back pain. Through the answers from yesterday's case study, remember we had a 42-year-old female who complains of terrible back pain in the right lower portion of her back that has been persistent for years. She has had normal MRI and normal imaging and has failed conservative treatments. She has been told by multiple providers that there was no explanation for her pain and she came to see me for another opinion. When describing her pain, she can take her thumb and put one spot over her right lower back in which she experiences the pain. Her pain is often worsened by unilateral weight bearing or bearing weight on one leg, such as going up and down stairs, walking on even ground and that type of thing. This is a very common presentation of sacroiliac joint pain. So this is a model of the pelvis and basically what we're looking at is the sacrum or the tailbone and this is the iliac crest so we call that sacroiliac which is this joint we have two of those on either side these joints can be a source of chronic pain and inflammation and we have two joints so you can have pain on the right side the left side or even both sides it's often misdiagnosed because imaging can be normal in addition to that it can be difficult to treat or to diagnose for the same reason Obviously, patients can have back pain for a variety of different reasons, so ensuring that you have the right diagnosis and what you suspect may be SI joint pain is very important. There can be numerous different causes of SI joint pain, and here are some of the examples of that. It can be from just arthritis. It can be from leg length discrepancy. It can be from pregnancy, which is most common in young women in my experience injury or trauma to those ligaments surrounding the joint, such as a car accident or a fall directly on the buttocks, even previous spine surgery or inflammatory processes such as gout can all be a source of SI joint pain. Getting the right diagnosis is obviously the most important thing and you need to go to a physician that is well versed in SI joint diagnosis. These are the tests that we typically do or physical examination findings that worsened SI joint pain. We typically do send the patients for physical therapy for a period of time under strict protocols for SI joint pain or SI joint dysfunction. If that does not have improvement of the patient's symptoms, they may be a candidate for some diagnostic injections. Diagnostic injections can be very important in helping decide whether or not a patient would benefit from surgical intervention. And if we do feel that the patient is an appropriate candidate for surgical intervention, we basically can place three screws across the joint in order to stabilize that joint. Trying to explain and diagnose as well as recommend treatment for SI joint pain within three minutes is extremely challenging. I think the bottom line is that realizing that back pain of all sorts is not necessarily normal. And if you feel like you're having some symptoms of this, seek an expert opinion or a second opinion if you've been told otherwise. So.